Hi and welcome to less than 5 minutes. We are going to be talking today about alternate access mapping. We have all heard or seen people with multiple identities. It's the same person but they have two identities. Similarly, let's talk about a SharePoint web application. A SharePoint web application has a backend and a frontend. The backend is the SQL server and the frontend is the IS. The SQL server, the backend is the person and the frontend IS is the identity. Now, when you go ahead and extend a SharePoint web application, what you're basically doing is creating multiple identities for the same person. Or in other words, creating multiple IS websites for the same SQL backend database. Now, let's have a look at how that's done in the real world. We'll have to first go to the SharePoint Manage Web Application page and then choose Extend a Web Application. You can see that I've selected the port 13551 for now. And if you scroll down, you would see multiple zones being listed. Uh, we'll be talking about zones in just a bit, but for now, I'm just going to choose Intranet and then click on OK. If you notice, I don't have any extra sites being listed in the SharePoint Web Application page. But however, if I go to IS Manager and then expand the sites, I would be able to see SharePoint 13551 as well as SharePoint 80. Basically, there are, these are two sites referencing to the same SQL backend database. Having talked about that, uh, let's now talk about a scenario where I just want to have one identity, but I want to have multiple names for the same identity. That's where alternate access mapping comes into picture. Alternate access mapping has two parts to it. One is the public URL, the other one is the internal URL. Let's first talk about the public URL. The same site and the same content can be accessed using different URLs. Please note that a site can have only a maximum of five public URLs, each of which corresponds to a different zone. Now, when you go ahead and type in a public URL in any of the browser, the URL stays as it is and does not change. Now let's see how we do that in SharePoint. Click on application management and then choose configure alternate access mappings and then you can choose edit public URL. You can see that the five different zones are listed here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add HTTP SP 2011 in the intranet zone. Uh, these zones are nothing but empty containers just used for our reference. It doesn't hold any significance as such. Let's move on right ahead and talk about internal URL. Consider a scenario where we have a public URL in the custom zone called sam.com. sam.com could be referenced to multiple internal URLs like as employee reference ID number.com or as user reference ID number.com. Each of these internal URL maps to one particular public URL. Please note that there can be an infinite number of internal URLs mapped to one particular public URL. Now, when you go ahead and type in the internal URL in the browser, it automatically changes to the corresponding public URL. As you can see, there's a maximum limit of five public URLs, but each of the public URLs can have infinite internal URLs. Now let's look at how that's configured in the SharePoint environment. You go ahead and click on add internal URL. I add in the internal URL that is HTTP SP 2010 internal. And I can choose the zone for which I want to add the internal URL. In my case, I'm going to choose default and then click on OK. If you have a look here, you can see that the default zone correspondingly has two internal URLs and one public URL. That is when you type in HTTP SP 2010 internal or HTTP SP 2010 in the URL in the browser, it automatically changes to HTTP SP 2010. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick recap. When you're extending a web application, you're creating two different identities for the same person, or in other words, two different IS websites for the same SQL backend database. You might want to do this when you want to give separate authentication methods for each of the IIS websites. For example, you could give Windows-based authentication for one IIS website and Forms-based authentication for the other IIS website. Next, we talked about alternate access mapping. Alternate access mapping is used when we want to have one person with one identity but with multiple names. Within alternate access mapping, there is a public URL and an internal URL. There can be a maximum of five public URLs, but there can be an infinite internal URLs map to each public URL. And the other difference is that when you type in a public URL, the URL stays, it does not change in the browser, but whereas in an internal URL, it automatically changes to the public URL. Thanks for watching. This is alternate access mapping in SharePoint explained in less than five minutes.